guys. So, uh, first thing when installing the clutch is obviously the flywheel. Um, if you're running a single plate, it'll be similar to this, minus the things for the basket. Same deal anyway. Um, so service manual says for the SDI model, these get torqued up to 75 Newton meters, obviously in a cross pattern like usual when tightening something like this. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of Loctite uh, 243, like a medium strength thread locker. Just like so. That's your preferred pattern, isn't it? Oh, it just depends on what day it is. <laughs> so the four I've got in there are already loose. Um, just to locate it, we'll get all these started and then tighten them up. All right, so I've just hand tightened all these. They're all reasonably tight. Um, so your pattern wants to be able to crosses. And Ben has taught me well. He's got me onto the paint marker method. So we mark each bolt after we do it. So we know that we've done it. So I'm gonna, the manual just says, gradually tighten them up to 75 Newton meters. I'll set it to, go 40 Newton meters. Alright, so that's, oh no, oh, that's 40, 40 Newton meters, now we'll go to 75. Alright, and just like that, it is done. Another thing to note, I know you all probably know this, but you can see here, this is your spigot bearing or pilot bearing. That's what the nose of your input shaft runs in, so make sure you've got one of them in the car. Did you check that your um, nose fits in there? Of course it does, it's super, it fits everything. Fair enough. I will check I like though, that. yes. Um, so yeah, obviously make sure you've got that. And if you're reusing your old flywheel, um, pay the dollars and get a new one for the sake of five, 10 bucks, whatever it is. All right, so before I put the clutch components, clutch discs, etc., in, I'm gonna give it a spray with some brake cleaner just to get any contaminants off. Okay, so you wanna assemble your whole clutch basket basically like so on the alignment tool. And before I did so, I brake cleaned the intermediate plate where the face that meets this um, bottom clutch disc and obviously make sure it's facing the right way. So flywheel side, as you can see, I've written. Now it's just a matter. Also, I'll also note, shit, this thing's getting heavy. I put an indexing mark um, so the studs line up. So you can see a blue mark here. I've got the blue mark on the cover. So that will go something like, oh my God. So that'll sit there for a sec. I'll go get those cap screws and we'll get some of them started. So you pretty much just gotta get it set up on the dowels, like it is now. And then you slowly torque it in with the, with the uh, supply. Cap screws. We got an air leak. All right, I'm back. One of the air compressor lines just blew a leak, so Ben's taking care of that. Once it expels the air, I'll chuck these in quickly and then give him a hand. So there's no actual torque spec for these. Um, so same deal, you just want to kind of go across them, crisscross pattern. And you can only pull them down so much, you kind of just got to gauge it. So I'll mention one other tip that I've learned in doing twin plate clutches. It may not be the case for this one, but I know for my other car, sometimes when you've got the, the plates on there, they kind of drop that little, little tiny bit inside the basket and it can make it kind of hard to pull the um, alignment tool out. So just nip them up, not really tight, so it puts all the load on. And then just wiggle this around and try and get rid of it once there's enough load on the, the plates so they're gonna stay aligned. Um, these plastic ones aren't the best, it kind of feels a bit flimsy. I've got a nice metal one for my other car. I'll have to try and source one for this when I do it next time, but um, yeah, for now that'll do. Alright guys, so the clutch is in, as you can see. Paint marks, I know they're all torqued. Um, for anyone interested, the factory torque spec for the 
clutch cover or pressure plate from factory is about 17 newton meters which is five fifths of fuck all um, I've got these up to about 20-25 they are M8 um, high tensile cap screws so that's no drama for the bolt and they're into some substantial steel so there's no chance of stripping um, yeah that's all good so the next step when I get to it we'll be setting up the release bearing and the fork and everything on the box I'll run you guys through that so yeah I'll just keep at it and soon it'll be tomorrow and Brett will be here and we'll be putting the box in alright guys so first thing we'll be doing before we put the box in is the shifter upgrade obviously you've got to put the six speed shifter in but I've gone the extra nine yards and got a full cart boy um, short shifter uh, the bushes and also the rear bush and also a nice cob knob which is nice Delrin piece of art so I actually bought that because I didn't think I had a six speed knob but it turns out I did but I'll run the cob one anyway because it's pretty oh bit of a weight difference in that have you nah oh, it's like got lead in it no. I'd be curious to see how short this thing shifts. Oh yeah, if yours is short. already short. Yeah. All right, so assembling the Cartboy short shifter. We're seeing this first time as as you guys are seeing it. So we've already punched this rubber bushing out, as you can see. Let's put some of this synthetic grease. It's always good when using poly bushings, um, from what I found anyway, is to always grease them. Always use a synthetic grease that's made for like rubber products. Because uh, sometimes, especially in suspension components, you can get like squeaks and other annoying things. So that bolt goes through the reverse lockout uh, bracket. So that's that until it goes in the car. What's the next order of affairs? Whatever this is, to the linkage. Yeah. So obviously now we've got that undone, the ball's gonna come out. So we'll go and figure out a good method and we'll report back. All right, so to make our lives easier, we're gonna take this boot and the uh, reverse selector or reverse lockout thing off. There's this little pin here. and make sure you don't lose it. So then you've got a spring down the guts. So now on the bottom of here, we've got some, uh, was it two Phillips heads? So I'm gonna get a screwdriver. All right. ta -da All right, so now we've got this off, guys. It's time to get rid of this ball joint. And believe it or not, this one, well, this is not, not what I'm asking you to believe, but this one's got a lot of grease and shit in it. But believe it or not, there's actually a circlip in there. If I move some of this grease out of the way. So, gonna need some circlip pliers, get rid of that, and then it should pop right out. Hey, it is easy. All right, so once you take the circlip off, it actually kind of just pops out quite easily. So this is the, the outer ring. See, it's got two O-rings on it, which kind of let the diaphragm flex a bit. So it's time to put it in the car? Yes. All right, well, seeing as though you pulled it out, I'll watch you put it back. Attempt to? No, I reckon you get it. So basically, feed it up through the bottom. Deal with it later. That's it. Get those bolts started. Anyway, you get the idea. I'm gonna put this down and give Brett a hand. So what's involved in actually installing it in the car, Brad? I've been missing out on all the fun. So far, I've got no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck, at least you're honest. <laughs> so as you can see down here, we're all good. Got this rear shifter bush on. Bit of lube in it, as you saw. The reverse lockout's all set up. Um, everything's ready to go, basically. i just got to put the box in. And if you hadn't seen already, I've successfully got the GDB FE440 2.2 turn lock to lock 
quick rack in and that is working beautifully. So check out that video if you haven't already. So Brett is requesting to touch my knob. <laughs> so, you ready for this? Ooh. Nice. Bah. Seems a bit floppy, mate. Oh, it's the we old... should put a bush kit in it. Yeah, the box is a bit worn, I think. <laughs> oh, nice, bro. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're about to put the new six speed in. Thought we'd better show you guys a side-by-side -side comparison. We'll also check all the plugs before we try and fandangle it into the place. But as you can see there, that's the five speed. This is an 07 out of a Rexy. And then here's the Papa six speed. Quite a bit girthier, I should say. And longer. Yeah, longer, so that's why you use the Auto Forester tower shaft. It's about 50 mil shorter or so. Um, I'll, I'll put a photo on the screen anyway. Um, so yeah, um, obviously these mounts are in the same spot, I think. This is a push type clutch, that is a pull type clutch. Okay, so first thing, got to get this 89 kilo beast up onto there. Okay, so before we go any further, we are putting a STI Group N uh, gearbox mount on. Uh, just as well I bought it because this one is completely torn. I don't know if you can see it. Anyway, take my word for it, it's fucked. But, which side was it? Anyway, the Group N one, what is it, stiffer? It's More durable. Stronger. All right, so that's it. Two bolts. Very nice. Another thing we just remembered is when we did Brett's boz, um, we had to change the cross member to the one with the spaces that suits the car. So we're hoping that we can purely just swap the front one and keep the rest of it because it's actually in really, really good condition. They're good. Everything's looked brand new almost. So there's the both warm. sides are fucked. Yeah, that's shit. So you can see the the torn rubber in there and there. Yeah, look at that. So this is how the uh, release bearing goes on the clutch. So don't get it back to front. We're about to go and set the the box up to take this and get all lubed, all the appropriate grease in the right places. So that goes on there like that. I'm pretty sure you just got to press this brass ring in to pop it back off. So that's why when you're doing the six speed, you've got to take the secret shaft out, which we'll show you in a very short second. All right, so it's time to set up the, um, I guess the bell housing section of the box. So for those of you who don't know, um, I'm sure there's people who have had a lot of trouble pulling a six speed out. There is a secret blanking plug here. So this contains the, um, the fork, if you can see through here. Well, I guess the pivot for the clutch fork, I should say. So, you take that out with a 10 mil Allen key, and then you need an M6 bolt, which I might even have one around here. And then she pulls out just like that. And then you can pull your fork out. I might go and clean this up. Um, I'm also going to get some emery paper and thoroughly clean this um, snout over the input shaft. And also I'm going to get rid of any debris in those splines. And then we'll assemble it back up. All right, so because we can, we're going to chuck this in the bead blaster and turn this from this ugly looking colour. Just wait and see how it comes out.
Alright, we're gonna do that. Hey, you missed a bit, bro. Nah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Let's give it a coat of. What do you reckon? Primer grey or black? Probably black. Yeah, black. Alright, so while the sexy black paint on that clutch fork is drying, I'll uh, prep up the input shaft a bit. So I'm just using some uh, Scotch Brite here with a bit of uh, lube. Done that, bro. Around and around. What do you think of that, mate? I love a bit of sandpaper on the shelf. <laughs> it's always good to get this nice and smooth because this is what your release bearing is sliding on. I think this is more what you're thinking about, bro. Tell me, Zombs. <laughs> Nothing like a polish. Now, just the Very same dealio with the. Uh, pivot for the fork. Just going to clean this up with some Scotch Brite. A little bit of Scotch Brite and some oil goes a long way. All right, so I guess first things first. I'm the realist. <laughs> so Subaru manual says it wants some grease on these contact surfaces of the fork. Um, grease in these surfaces where the um, pivot pin goes and also a little bit on this shaft where the um, Duda slides. So, this is the grease we're using. Plug. So, for this part, a little bit goes a long way. You don't want too much. Otherwise, it will spray all over your clutch and your bell housing. So just a real thin coating like that. That's also why it's crucial to clean up that area um, because it'll help it slide as well. So it goes that way, this part goes into the clutch, it actually clicks in. It goes on there like that. Bloody happy days. So the next thing is the fork. So uh, it goes that way. So we've got to put some on these, on these mating surfaces. So just kind of get your hand, ream it around in there. You don't want it too thick because it's only just going to push out anyway. All right, so that's ready to go in. It goes that way. So the little divot for the slave cylinder goes towards the back of the car. goes just like that and then this shaft got to lube this section where it goes into there and also I guess I'll just do the whole thing fuck it if in doubt just grease it out all right like so okay Brett do you want to help guide me in yes oh, let's have a little sus how do you look and another thing to make note of, there's actually a locating pin through there. So you want the um, the slot in the shaft to be running uh, east-west, 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Otherwise you won't be able to seat it. And Ooh, just yeah. like that, I think we are done like a dinner. And on that note, I think it is time for dinner. Fucking oath it is. So with that done, we can put the bung hole back in. <laughs> Even lubed up the bungle. And that gets torqued to. Let me have a look. Oh, it's to that. <laughs> it gets torqued to 44 newton meters. Yeah, Not that anyone fucking really cares or does that, but they say it. Alright, guys, so that is done. Fuck. <laughs> that was so much easier last time on Brett's car.
What the fuck? I think it's because Adrian's got a taller trolley. And he's shorter. <laughs> and he's done it a million times. But it's in. So let's go have a look see. We'll give you guys a quick explanation on what we did. Uh, let me turn this brightness up. So you see we've got the a la trolley. Um, so it is all mounted up now. So basically you got to jack the front of the box up. We put a bit of timber under there, you might have seen in the um, time lapse. And you got to basically jack the front of the box up um, so that you can clear the cross member, jack get started on the studs. And yeah, as Brett said, we jacked the motor up then to kind of bring it back on the same plane. And it's just a matter of being delicate and keeping an eye on the, the line down the bell housing, keep that nice and straight. And then once you get close to the um, splines on the input shaft engaging, you might have to put the tail shaft in, give it a bit of a twist. And then if you got some pressure, we actually put the two top bolts in and put a little bit of preload on them. So that when we actually rotated that uh, tail shaft, the box, I felt it just pop forward. So that's when the splines aligned. So yeah, it's in now. We're gonna call it a night in a sec. Um, about to take the car up. So take it away, Siggy. I think we're good. Oh man. Oh what a feeling. Subaru. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's fuck off. Yep. So I guess uh, tomorrow's task. We chuck the starter on, get the slave bled. Hopefully sort the diff out. Yeah, I'm still waiting for some fucking bushings. They should be coming tomorrow. Um, so I guess we'll try, well we will finish the box. Yeah. We're just gonna bleed the slave and the clutch. Well, the whole clutch is I should say. Um, put the starter on. Starter should fit, I've done a check measure. It looks like it'll be fine. Um, yeah, I guess then diff, but I don't want to put the tail shaft in until we run fuel line. CVs? Yeah, we can chuck all the CVs back in. Pop the hubs back where they want to be. Yeah, uh, also dump pipe can be fabricated. I might do that the next day. Um, yeah, anyway, we're going to go have a snooze. <laughs> and you'll see us in a couple of seconds, but Tomorrow. nearly 10 hours later. <laughs>